Oh yeah, baby. Hey guys, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome back to another episode. As you can see, we are in the high country, California. We have some beautiful snow-capped mountains behind us, guys. We are in winter time, baby. We are doing some winter trout fishing for brown trout and for rainbow trout. We're actually fishing in a reservoir today. And it's a really interesting uh, looking reservoir. It's, it's, it looks kind of like a snake um, or just like a large river. Um, but that's because it's formed by a river. It's formed by the Owens River. And oh, look at that. Look at that gorgeous view. You can see there's the river right down there. And we're, we're right in the beginning portions of it. We're not quite to the reservoir yet. We got a bit of a walk. And guys, look at what we're doing. We're fishing with a fly rod, a bait rod, and a jig rod. Guys, we're gonna be trying to catch these trout in every way possible. And of course then, uh, we're gonna do a catch and cook as well. So, my idea is probably we're gonna do definitely a brown trout catch and cook, maybe even a rainbow trout catch and cook as well. I wanna take some trout back home for my wife. God, aren't those mountains beautiful though? Well, guys, happy to have you with me. Let's go catch some fish. So you guys see down there how the water is starting to look really calm. It's slowing down. We're getting really close to the reservoir portion now. And this is kind of the this is the structure of this area. It's very, looks like a, where they mill rock, like a rock mill, I think is what you mean. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know if that's what it's called, but that's what this kind of looks like. So yesterday, guys, I was fishing the upper portions of this river. It's called the Upper Owens River. And I got there and there was about two to three foot of snow on average. And I woke up in the morning, it was negative 15 degrees it was ridiculous how cold it was you know i came prepared so i was fine but nonetheless i got out i started fishing because there's supposed to be an early season uh, rainbow trout spawning run that's starting to happen so i was fishing that river and about halfway through the day um i was crossing a section of the river it was about i don't know like thigh deep and my waders burst uh right at the uh, at the seam and I mean, these are brand new waders, guys. I'm not kidding. I think this is like the fifth time I've worn them. I kind of had to cut my day short. <laughs> I, I got pretty wet. I fished even then still for like an hour and a half because I wasn't, I wasn't too cold. But then I knew it was going to be smart just to start to head back because at that point it was maybe 15 degrees outside. So unfortunately, I don't have anything to really show you with that episode, but it was a story. I'll tell you that much. The company is called Paramount, and I'm gonna hit them up because that's that just doesn't make any sense. Waders should last four times longer than that. We're really starting to open up now. That snow is a pretty sight. As you guys can see, it's a all the shore axis is very steep, so. We're just gonna have to climb our way down there. And what's nice is that it just drops right off. So you don't even have to cast your bait rod out very far. And um, usually fishing is good right there by the shore. Yeah. Well, let's try this. Oop. Okay, so here's what we're doing, folks. We're gonna first rig up my bait rod. So since we're fishing for food today, you can't beat an inflated nightcrawler. So how we're gonna rig up this bait rod is a good old traditional Carolina rig. Yeah, perfect. Start at the thicker part of the worm, which is the head. We're gonna work our way down. So we're gonna do our best not to poke the tip of the hook out until we've slid it up all the way up on the shank so it kind of looks like that because the more holes you poke in the worm the harder it is to hold air 
because basically guys what we're doing is we're creating a, a worm balloon and then I'm gonna poke behind it boom that should be groovy now one of the most important parts yes you want it to be really floating well i usually dunk it a couple of times just to make sure that the air is holding and the water isn't getting into it and guys we're ready we're ready to catch a, a trout here perfect we're using four pound test oh wow yeah that's that's sinking and it's deep in there got her bell on bait rod is ready to go let's jump over to the fly rod okay guys so for our fly rod today check this out so we're gonna do we're, we're fishing with some um, some Perigon midges. The first one, we're actually doing a, it's a double, we're doing a double Perigon setup. So the first one is just a, like a size, I think it's a size 14 um, midge Perigon. And then we got like a size like 18. Um, oh, what's this called? Yeah, a caddis puppa. A tiny little caddis puppa. We have like a, ooh, what is this? It's probably gotta be at least eight, an eight foot liter. And we're just gonna throw it out there and just let it let it sink. We might need to put on a little split shot, but oh, there we go. And we got it on an indicator, and we're just gonna let it sink. And the idea is that so this is winter time. There's not a lot of insect acti activity, so the, the the majority of the aquatic insects are these midges, are these little um, adolescent forms of these bugs. Ah, I want to check the water temperature. Feels like 50. Oh no, <laughs> it is at 42. That's cold. That means that we're probably going to see more activity later in the day. Optimal trout feeding temperature is in the low 50s, but that doesn't mean they're not going to feed at other temperatures. It just, it just means that, you know, we might not see a lot of activity for these first few hours of the day. And of course, fishing. You never can pin anything down. Who knows what it's gonna be like. Okay guys, so we're gonna switch over to our jig rod now. I feel like I gave the midge action a good, a good go. All right guys, so we're gonna start off with this. It's a Sierra Slammer kind of has that orange belly, kind of like what brown trout do. And if you remember, I caught my biggest brown trout ever on this sucker in um, in a backcountry lake a few months ago. You should check out that episode here. It was it was pretty, pretty darn epic. So we're gonna try this one here as well and see if we have a similar result. Now, one, one tip guys I forgot to give you on this bait rod is once you've cast it out, you really want to double check, especially when you're fishing a rocky red reservoir like this. You wanna make sure it's not stuck in some rocks because I've had many times where I've cast it out, the, the slip sinker gets stuck in rocks and a fish takes it, but I never know because it's, it's all tangled up down there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna reel it in a little bit and I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna start dragging that sinker on the bottom. Yep, I can feel it um, coming up from the bottom and then heading back down, so that's good. Oh, guys, we're gonna, we're gonna bite. Tighten up this drag. Yeah, there we go, guys. This is a good, this is a good fish. 
Yeah, this is a good fish. Yeah, it's a nice brown. Wait, what the heck? What the heck? We got him foul hooked, guys. We got him foul hooked. He he must have he came for it and then he just. Oh, come here. Oh wow. Did we get him foul? No, we didn't get him foul hooked. It just looked like we did at first. Holy cremoli. There we go, guys. First brown trout of the day on that night crawler, baby. Ah, it's a beauty. That's a beauty. Look at that. Yeah, for some reason, I, th I thought he was foul hooked because the worm was on his back. But look at that. Took that night crawler. So uh, a brown trout spawning season is in um, the fall, and you can tell this guy has just gotten done with a, with its with his spawn because. But if you look down here in this anal fin, see how see how beaten up that is. They they use this fin to spread the egg or the or the semen, and I'm pretty sure this is a female because no hook jaw, right? No hook jaw. But um, this girl just got done laying her eggs. Perfect time to catch her. Numero uno. We have a five trout limit, folks. Probably not going to keep that many, but we are taking fish home, like I said. So we are uh, we're not only having a catch and cook today. But we're, we're bringing, bringing some home to the lady. Yes. As I'm letting this swim bait sink, I'm watching the line just to make sure it doesn't dart off because I've gotten many fish. In fact, my biggest brown I've caught was with the swim bait sinking down. So sometimes you'll just get them on the drop. So you want to be ready. Oh. Get another bite, guys. And bite on the bait rod. Hasn't decided if he, right? Yeah, there we go. Yep, there we go. Yeah. Got another brown. It's another brownie. Another brownie. Oh, man. Oh, yeah, baby. The bait rod has done its duty. That, that looks like a that looks like a female. Ah. Wow. Yeah. Good. Good eating, man. Boom. Heck yeah. Okay, guys. So if you can see that, that's the dam. So we're actually we're actually already at the end. What we're gonna do is trying to find something a little different like more rock structure down there or something okay guys so every time that i fish this reservoir i have absolutely slayed with this lo and behold brown trout imitation cast master Ugh, boy. Yeah, it's really rocky out there. Oh no. Well, we might have lost our one and only brown trout cast master that we have with us today. <sighs> yep. We lost it. I'm just gonna have to let my heavier lures sink less.
Okay, guys, so here's what we're going to do. Just so that I know if there's even trout out here, you know, our limit is five, remember. So I'm going to throw out our bait rod again just to see if there's even activity out here. And then we're going to go back to the uh, our jig rod and throw another, uh, probably another swim bait. We're going to start there. Then we have some spoons to try as well. Oh, yeah. Floating great. Now, this is really rocky out here. So we're going to do what I what I told you guys back at the other spot. We're going to make sure that this is not going to get snagged on its way on its way down. All right, guys, we're trying a different uh, different swim bait here. I feel like we just got to figure out what these guys are wanting. I don't feel like we've really figured that out yet. Obviously, they want night crawlers. Almost always they want night crawlers. So that's good. But now what do they want besides that? Oh guys, I think we're getting I think we're getting a bite. I think we're it could be the wind. Um, it might have just been the wind. Wait. Nope, definitely not. That's not the way. Got one. Oh, it's a little rainbow. It's a little rainbow trout. Ha! Look at that, a little rainbow trout. So they, they stock these guys in this reservoir, and then um, over time they become, you know, they become holdover trout. Look at that. It's a nice looking one. If we can let this guy go, I think I'm going to. Let's just see where the hook is at. Um, that looks like I'll be able to get this one out. Another look at him. There we go. Was, I'm just gonna make sure he's all right before we shove him, let him, let him go. Check out that mountain, guys. I think it's, I think it's getting snow, like just behind it. Okay, guys, we just got climbed down. See that skid mark? That's my, how's my butt? I literally just slid all the way down. All right, so here's what we're doing. This is really steep, so. We're gonna cast out a bait rod, and then we are gonna go ham on some spoons. Which spoon should we do? I'm feeling this one. Roll a real nice copper look. Gee whiz, these uh, <laughs> these fish are picky, folks. I usually I usually do much better than this on on uh, on a spoon or a castmaster, but they're just not they're not uh, they're not even they're not even bumping it at all with their nose. We just got a bite. I think you, you saw that before I did, so that was good. That was just one bite though. We're waiting for the, we're waiting for it to really take it. There it goes. He's running with it, yep. Yes. Ooh, yep. This feels like a eh, half decent fish. And it's a rainbow trout. It's a rainbow trout. Very nice. Ooh, this one looks like a, definitely like a holdover or even a wild one. Wow. Oh, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful, guys. Nice. Well, guys, bait it is. Bait is what it is today. We're still not done. We're still going to try to catch fish other ways, but look at that. Gorgeous. Yeah. Good 13, 14 incher. It's got some girth. All right, guys, look, here's the deal. It's 
three o'clock. We only have an hour and a half left of daylight. Good old winter. So I'm starving. I haven't eaten. I've eaten a, a bag of jerky and a, and a protein bar. That's it. So that's that's a long time, guys, to go without a meal. But it also means that I have an absolutely enormous appetite for trout. So let's go eat. All right, one of my favorite things to do with these fish is always to see what they're eating. We already saw some bloodworms um, come up from her stomach. I am sure that she's gonna have more of that in there. Ah, okay guys, so remember how I said that it was just spawning season for these trout? Well, sure enough, you can see remnants of the eggs from when she had spawned. See that? I can see some bigger ones in here that definitely just kind of just never, never made it. And these are probably just, maybe her body just kind of made some leftover. She definitely spawned a few months ago. So that's, uh, that's good. Her gene pool continues. Bloodworms and um, some green, honestly, it looks like the green caddis pupa, like that what we were using today, huh? There we go. And we're just gonna leave the pin bones in there because I don't have my fillet knife, I just have my field knife with me so I can't be that precise. But nonetheless, that's gonna be a good chunk of meat, folks. Oh man, it's getting cold in here in this canyon. Okay, here's what we're doing. I I had some chives, but unfortunately they, um, they froze and they're now seaweed, so I don't think we're going to be really be able to make much use of those, but we have a lemon and we have a new spice. I picked this up on the way over here. I don't know. I've never had this. Jane's Crazy Mixed Up Seasoning. Um, it sounds like a mystery, so I'm, I like mystery, so let's give it a try. Butter. Lots of butter. Okay. I just need it to stay momentarily. Yeah, that's good. All right, so the pan is definitely hot enough. All we gotta do now is put a good amount of, not a good amount, but just, just enough to make sure we are getting the flavor, right? We're gonna mix that seasoning up in the butter to create like, almost like a sauce. That's a nice seasoned buttery sauce. And then that's what we're gonna saute, rather fry our brown trout fillets in. Where are they? They're on the rock behind me, perfect. Uno, dos, look at that, beautiful. Oh yeah, thank you, thank you Lord. Oh my God, that smells amazing. Just, just judging by the smell, that spice is gonna be a winner. Mm. Mm. It just needs to, oh wow. Wow, that seasoning, it tastes like, like chicken and dumplings. I mean, it's good. It just, I was not expecting that, especially for a, a trout, a trout dinner. <sighs> there she is plated. Thank you, Lord, so much for blessing us with this fish today. Thank you, thank you so much. And thank you, Mr. Fish, Mrs. Fish. Okay. Oh, this is just fresh off the... That's really good. Wow. Yeah, it, it, when I say chicken and dumplings, it doesn't, it's like a, it tastes like just like a home cooked like a home style meal. You know, when you go into a diner and you want like a home style chicken and mashed potatoes, like that's what this, it makes this trout taste like, just like a home style chicken and mashed potatoes. That's the sensation I'm getting guys. I don't know how else to describe it. <laughs> it is really good. Jane's crazy. Mixed up seasoning. Ooh. 
Oh, the lemon. Mmm. Just when I thought I couldn't get any better. Y'all, thank you so much for joining me again on another adventure. And um, I just hope you guys have an awesome Christmas and holiday and you get on out there and you make some of your own memories and some of your own adventures. Oh, and don't forget that the small business that I've been getting a lot of my my gear from lately, Aventron, they're, they're giving all my subscribers 20% off of their store when they uh, when you use my code until journey's end. Uh, but it only goes through December 31st. So if you guys need any fly fishing gear or spin fishing gear, um, they have a ton of other stuff too, like you know biking gear and crossbow hunting gear as well. Oh, and just to note, the 20% off is not for any uh, sale items or and there's some like specific brands that just don't accept any discounts. So just be on the lookout for that. If you try to input my code and it doesn't work, that's why. But guys, again, thank you. Thank you for joining me. I'll catch you on the next adventure. Peace. <laughs>